named Damon Boyser. I care deeply about living life to the fullest. Currently, I really like uh, playing my guitar. I like to play heavy metal. I like uh, Pantera. I like Deftones. I like Raging at the Machine. I really like playing my guitar because it, it brings me back to like pre-injury. Because, you know, growing up, it's like you wanted to be a rock star. And I'm like, Here you are, 40 years old, and still imagining you're a rock star. <laughs> Pre-injury, life was good. I worked construction, played music, hung out with friends, always surfed. The beach is always right there. So you can wake up and walk out the door and go surfing. So I'm from Kauai. I went to high school on Oahu, which is the main island. And I went to Kamehameha schools. That's for uh, people who only have Hawaiian blood. After I graduated, Moved back home to Kauai for a little bit, and then I wound up moving up to Big Island. On Big Island, there's like a lot of guys who like the kind of music that I like. So uh, I was able to get a couple bands together and played a couple games. I was injured in 2003. A friend of mine and myself went to the beach, and uh, he was jumping in the water ahead of me, and he was diving into like this kind of like trough where there's sandy bottom and reef and rock on each side and it was one of those high surf days where the water is white it's like foam on the top you can't see into the water so when it's my turn i jumped up not even like a foot or three feet high and the water was probably around that deep too but that's enough to jump when you're jumping such a shallow distance when i jumped i wound up hitting the rock and like split my head and it crushed my C6. I kind of got instantly paralyzed. I was like, had to wait for the water to roll me over so I could get my mouth to the surface to like call for help. And when I first told my friend like, oh, help, help. Like he was hesitant at first because there's so much blood in the water. He thought a shark was attacking me. And then when he heard me say help, like he knew I needed help. So he just came right in. The beaches are jagged lava rock. So he had to get me up onto the lava rock. And then that was 2003 when uh, cell phones weren't really happening yet. So we had to like track down some kids with a cell phone and then finally get some firemen down there. Well, when I went to the ER, it was, it was hectic. Like, you know, it wasn't what I expected. It was just one doctor in there. So he had to like reach around and like headlock me to like pull my scalp together. And he had like one knee up in the air to like steady my neck. And then, like, he was stapling my head together with one hand. I was 27. And I'm 45 now. Oh, what really helped me get back to the swing of things is, like, figuring out what you're most afraid of. And, like, just overcoming fear. The higher the fear threshold, the higher the reward. I was afraid of skydiving, so I went skydiving. <laughs> you know, I was already, like, hanging up the phone not wanting to make the reservation and then the car drive down like terrifying and then of course on the drop zone in the field you're terrified but once you're out the door and you're flying through the air it's like god it's like wonderful the instructor he landed me in my wheelchair i didn't think that much of it but like they were all waiting for me back at the, the shop they're like we gotta see this video we got it on video you're landing in the chair i guess they never saw nobody do that before being the first in the world to do stuff I, I never had that in my mediocre life of walking. Now I can be the first person to do stuff in the world in a wheelchair. The most surprising experience that I happened for me was entering a relationship or getting a girlfriend. We bumped into each other and started hanging out. I didn't think I'd want to allow myself to be in that kind of situation again. To be in a relationship and let someone see that side of you, you know, the side that the caregiver sees. That's like a very vulnerable <laughs> sign. I want to continue playing guitar, try to get a little better and better. Uh, I keep sending in submissions to Guinness. I want to be the fastest quadriplegic in the world. I played like Fear Factory songs and Dino Kazars, the guitar player from Fear Factory, I'll tag him in and he'll be like, Ooh, yeah, that's a good tone. Keep practicing, man. <laughs> For people who are newly injured, you know, definitely 
set up your Facebook, get involved with social media, like you'd be surprised. You like talk to another person in your situation and you can ask the most incredible questions and they'll have an answer for you because they've been through it. You got your guys that are old timer injuries that, you know, they've figured it out from just so much experience. You've got your people that were born with it or like, or happened when they're so young that, you know, they just never saw their disability as a disability. It was just get it done. That way they're constantly, you're learning, you know, you can just always soak it in because it's, it's going to be your turn one day where you got to pass on all the information. A mentor can just get out there and really show the mentee, the, the newly injured, what's possible. You know, you can show them, like, look at this. It's sim- simple things, transferring off, uh, on a bed and off the bed, just transferring a bunch in front of someone. Or simple stuff like showing someone how to pull their, their pants on with use elastic or use keychain, the key rings to put inside your zippers to put your fingers in and zip it up. You ever get curious, you know, watch a video and just think, can you imagine yourself doing what you see in the video? If you can't, then watch another video. Because YouTube, YouTube is like whatever you can think of is on there. Walking again is not necessarily a goal because the chair is a part of my body, you know. I'm settled. I'm settled into it, you know. I, I like having my, my chair it's like blinged out. So the goal is, you know, to be happy with your life and satisfied with what you got and not disappointed or angry that something happened to you. I think the goal is just, you know, to settle, be happy with what you got, you know, drive a car, have a relationship, have a family, have your house, your picket fence and your, your Christmas trees and Thanksgiving dinners. <laughs>